Um, I chose journalism because I felt like it was an opportunity to um, do something I was good at, which is writing, um, but also to do something that had a positive impact on the world. I graduated from college in 1984, and this, so I, I was in high school and grade school as the country was going through Watergate. We, we saw the impact that really good journalism could have on dealing with a, a bad situation. But the first job I got was at a twice a week newspaper on Cape Cod that literally used, still used manual typewriters. This was 1984. and I was making $250 a week. One of the drawbacks of going to a school that didn't have a journalism program was, um, you know, I didn't, there wasn't like a pipeline into bigger newspapers. I went to the smallest newspapers and because, you know, I didn't have the, the credentials, but I covered local communities. I covered small towns and that was a great training ground. I was young and very excited, but the big difference working for a big city newspaper is um, resources. They have the ability to, you know, send you to cover stories, or they did. I mean, they don't do it as much anymore. You know, it was pretty exciting to come into work and think, and, you know, not really know what you were gonna be working on. And all of a sudden somebody says, grab your coat, go to O'Hare, call us from the airport, and we'll fill you in. But, you know, the, the, again, pre-internet, pre-smartphone, they had to sort of move fast, so I would I would get in a cab and and go to O'Hare, pick up a payphone, and they'd say you're going to Montana. You know the Unabomber was just arrested, but you know you also pretty quickly develop a um, an appreciation for the, the how much influence you can have, not so much in terms of shaping things the way you want them to be, but you have to. You have to be fair and you have to be accurate because your stories were read by so many people. So if you were on page one of the paper, there were you know several million people who were seeing that story. And, and it's a great ego boost and it's really exciting, but you also, it, it can be a little bit nerve wracking because if you make a mistake, it's pretty embarrassing. When Lee Miglin was killed in Chicago, it was a big crime story, and, and everybody assumed it was like a random um, strong arm robbery. Then he left Chicago and killed somebody else in New Jersey. Uh, then it became a, kind of a national story. This is all long before he killed Versace, when it became an international story. We were uh, assigned to write a profile of somebody that we could never interview and we had never met and um, because he was a fugitive and so that was a real challenge and really kind of exciting because he was a well-known fugitive so the people that I were interviewing the people that I was interviewing knew him really well and also knew that it seemed like he was now a murderer and so there was a lot of anguish and stress and people um, you know you kind of had to um, you had to work hard to separate the, the sort of legend that was already growing about him from facts. You know, he was a, he was a, a, a lifetime sort of liar, poser, um, you know, hanger on, gold digger kind of person who sort of somehow snapped. It's the kind of thing that they're making movies about and you were reporting on it in real time. You know, Loyola has a, a nice little group of adjunct professors who are still, you know, have one foot in the business and one foot in academia. So I gave it a try and liked it. What is important to pass along to people? I mean, as somebody who did not go to journalism school, I always felt like uh, there was too much emphasis in journalism school on, on minutia, on, you know, style book things and the, the real qualities of a good journalist aren't whether they, you know, 
know the AP style for Chicago. It's whether they are fully committed to really finding out the truth and finding and telling really compelling, important, interesting stories. I, I don't know what the future of newspapers is gonna be, but it's, it's, we're definitely in a state of flux. But ultimately, I think it'll survive. I think people, people need reliable information.